Sorry, guys. I got to cool down. I mean, that new intro video is just straight fire. And if you like it, hit the thumbs up icon. But as always, welcome into today's show, Saints fans. I'm your host, Trace Gerard, as always. And to kind of lay, lay out what we're talking about, to set the scene, if you will, we're going to be talking about the Aaron Rodgers injury. I mean, you saw the title. You saw the thumbnail. Is Jameis Winston headed to the Jets? We're going to discuss that and the idea and the possibility of it. And then to round things out, we're going to talk about three breakout candidates from NFL Week 1 for the New Orleans Saints. So without further ado, let's talk about Aaron Rodgers because I don't care if you like the guy. I don't care if you like the Jets. I don't care if you think this guy's an idiot. At the end of the day, injuries suck. They are awful and they are a terrible thing, but they are a part of sports, unfortunately. And especially when it's a player of the pedigree that Aaron Rodgers has, it stinks to see that guy go down. I mean... Making his debut with the New York Jets on Monday Night Football could not have set up a better season for the Jets. I mean, you watched him walk out on the field with the American flag out the tunnel. I think everyone was a little bit bought in and was taking a sip of the Kool-Aid for at least a second. However, the cups are empty. The Kool-Aid has run dry because, unfortunately, sources and reports confirm that he tore his Achilles, meaning the season is over. So... Is it the end of his career as well? Is it just the end of the season? It's kind of an unfortunate thing. Stinks to see that. But let's talk about Zach Wilson because I don't know if he's like the long-term answer here. Sure, Zach Wilson was good enough to get you a win. I mean, that, that game was crazy. It was pretty drunk. Good thing that game didn't have its keys to drive home. I mean, you had a wild ending, punt return in overtime, third time in NFL history that's ever happened. But Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, they're not getting the job done for you. They're not taking the New York Jets to the postseason. But here's what I will say. I hate to say it, man. I really hate saying this, and I hate that I even have to talk about it, but the Saints may want to look into trading Jameis Winston. And I have reasons as to why I hate it and why I don't like the idea of losing Winston, but I do think that he would be a fit for the Jets, but before I get into my thoughts, guys, I encourage you to subscribe for Saints news, rumors, updates, all sort of, all sorts of interactive and fun, engaging content. A diehard Saints fan since the day I stepped foot on this planet, and I will die a Saints fan. And here's the situation: you guys see these numbers right here? It pisses me off because yesterday the Falcons picked up 25 new subscribers on a video, and Nick Roloff. I have to share a desk next to that guy. He's in charge of our Falcons channel, and he's just been in my ear yapping about the Falcons. So let's shut him up. Help me out. Subscribe and turn on your notifications so that way we can just turn Roly and the Falcons, just turn them quiet, make them, make them shut up, and they can just go back into being, you know, the Saints baby, kid, baby child, if you will. Hit the sub button. I'm tired of talking about the Falcons. Let's get back into the football talk. All right. So in terms of the Jets, Here's your free agent quarterback list. And I can tell you right now, I don't think Phillip Rivers come out of retirement. I don't think Matt Ryan's coming out of retirement. And I, can, I would be willing to bet that Tom Brady ain't coming out of retirement too. So your options are Carson Wentz, who can't, you, you can't make a team win. Ever since he left Philadelphia, he's just been terrible. Colt McCoy, no. Joe Flacco, I mean, there's familiarity, I guess, maybe. But, like, no. Nick Foles? No. Trevor Simeon? We all know about that experiment. God, no. So, it brings me to a point. Winston might be the best option for the Jets. And while I say that Winston is the best option, I'd hate to lose him. I mean, he's an incredible locker room guy. There's not a person in the NFL, in my opinion, that can bring the energy, the charisma, the camaraderie, the leadership, um, and everything else that it takes to be a quality leader and a quality guy in a locker room. Jameis Winston embodies that better than anyone in the NFL, in my personal opinion. However, either way on this argument, if you are in the uh, boat of get him out of here, trade him away, let's get some draft picks, whatever, or if you're in the boat of, nah, let's keep him around, the Saints have to consider what's best for the team. And for me personally, I think actually keeping Winston this season might be the best for the Saints because – Here's the thing. Jameis Winston, he's a great QB, too. Realistically, I think he could serve as a QB1 somewhere. I mean, like, you're telling me that Desmond Ritter 
Kenny Pickett, they're better than Jameis Winston? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, come on. Really? Jake Hayner, though, he is facing a suspension for that PED weird thing that happened and stuff. So while Hayner is suspended, you could still fill in for Taysom Hill. You could still have him be like an emergency quarterback kind of thing. And with that new rule, it does give the Saints some flexibility to potentially move Winston. But I do think that keeping Winston around makes some sense for the Saints. Uh, just because I want to give Jake Hayner even less pressure and a little bit more time to continue to develop. So I just want to know from you guys, though. You guys got my opinion. Y'all got my thoughts. I want you to let me know. What say you, Saints fans? Would you trade Jameis Winston type T for trade? Type P for, or, or type Y for yes, type N for no. Excuse me, I can't even read. I'm like a Bama fan, my bad. But let me know, what say you? Would you trade Jameis Winston? All right, so let's talk about some breakout players because good Lord, were there a handful of good ones. But I want to highlight three guys right here, and I'm going to go ahead and say it off the rip. It's not going to be sexy positions, but the production was sexy as all get out. So Carl Granderson, good Lord. Four tackles, one and a half sacks. A tackle for a loss and four quarterback hits. One of my favorite things about Carl Granderson was the development that he had this offseason. I was sitting here saying Isaiah Foskey might be able to push him. Peyton Turner might be able to push him. We now know Peyton Turner, he's, he's hurt. He has, a, he has a toe injury. He's hurt. He's not going to be playing for at least a handful of weeks. We don't know the exact extent, but he's not playing for a little bit. Uh, Isaiah Foskey was not active last week. Carl Granderson, though, he lit it up. And I just want to show some tape right here. So right here, you can see Carl Granderson lined up on the defensive end against one of the Titans offensive linemen. So he's setting up a spin move right here. And you can see with his left foot, he's planting to lean into the spin. And then he's going to roll out and spin outside of the, or spin to the interior of the def offensive lineman. And look at this separation right here. So I'm still learning the green scheme, but lurk at this separation. You got about three yards, two to three yards between Carl Granderson, who's already on Ryan Tannehill, and by the time that this offensive lineman realized where he was, it was way too late. You weren't making a play, and Ryan Tannehill had, had to get the ball out of the pocket and throw the ball away. So this is why I love what I saw from Carl Granderson, and not to mention he was winning with spin moves, but he was also winning with bull rushes. I mean – his development was incredible this offseason, and I just love seeing Carl Granderson light it up and be a massive part of the reason the Saints defensive line was successful. He leads the team in sacks right now, so shout out to the sack leader, and if you are impressed with what he did this season, or not this season, in week one so far of this season, hit the thumbs up icon, like this video, because man, if this doesn't get at least, like what, a thousand likes heaps, a bunch of y'all must not be very impressed with what he did. Uh, meanwhile, I'm over here saying, wow. I want to watch more tape on him. But guys, before we get into my last two breakouts, really quick reminder, really quick shout out to our friends over at BetUS. They have an awesome 125% deposit bonus if you use this link down below. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use promo code chat125. You put in 100 bucks, they give you 125. You have 225 to game with. Put some money down on the Saints. They're three-point favorites against the Panthers this week. You throw some money down on LSU, Tulane. Whatever you want to do, use chatsports.com slash bet, promo code chat125 to do it. All right, an untraditional one here. Now, hear me out. Lou Headley, he won the punter battle. He took over as – he beat Blake Gillikin, who's been with the team for a couple years now. The 30-year-old rookie put on a freaking show. Ozzy, 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 oi, oi, oi. Good Lord, five punts all landed within the 25-yard line. And one thing that I really liked on the punts when Headley was out there, you could, like, you could literally hear the boom whenever the ball was hit. I mean, it was, it was incredible. Like, the fact that on a TV broadcast you could hear how hard he kicked that ball is pretty damn insane. Averaged 48.2 yards per punt. He ranked 13th out of 30 punters who actually, you know, could punt the ball away. He would have ranked higher had he not had to punt so much. The guys in front of him, there's like six guys in front of him who had four punts. So, you know, the averages kind of all move around the more punts you do and whatnot. But the thing about it, about those punts, they were really hard for returners to track and, and, and to handle. So it gave time for the gunners to get downfield and to make a play. And the special teams unit for the New Orleans Saints, 
The defense was incredible, but the special teams unit was unbelievable as well. I mean, perfect on field goals, great punts. You had great kick. Re- you were really good on kick return. Outside of the fumble that you had in the opening kickoff from Rashid Shahid, special teams was unbelievable. And Lou Headley was a big reason of that. So shout out to the Miami product. Shout out to the Aussie. And I'm just going to say it again, Seeps. I was talking about it when we made the UDFA video. I really was hoping that Headley would make it. The Aussie kicker, I mean, it, just the way he kicks it makes it hard for uh, punt returners to get the ball. And that's going to be an awesome reason for this, or awesome thing for the Saints. I think that's a big reason why he beat out Blake Gilligan. All right, let's get to my last breakout player sticking on special teams. Sorry, offense. Kind of a dud of a week. Derek Carr, sure, he had the touchdown. 300 yards, that was awesome. Doesn't make you a breakout. We all know Derek Carr is capable of that. But Blake Groupie, shout out to the rookie. Because one thing I found really interesting, and I tweeted this out, the comparison of how Groupie versus Will Lutz did. And if you guys are living under a rock, if you forgot what happened, Will Lutz was traded to the Denver Broncos to reunite with Sean Payton after Blake Groupie won the kicker battle in training camp and in the preseason. So I tweeted this out. It's the stat line of both players. So rookie Blake Groupie today, he went three for three. This was on game day, by the way. So three for three on field goals, and he was good from 23, 33, and 52. And he was one for one on extra points. Will Lutz in his Broncos debut was one for two in field goals. He was good from 24, but missed from 55. And he was one for two on extra points. My personal opinion, I think the Saints may have won this trade. I think they made the right decision. And I know I'm hard on Dennis Allen. I know I'm hard on this coaching staff. But shout out to them for getting it right. I mean, Will Lutz is a great kicker. But to see that you may, you know, see to see this, that you may get a better production out of a rookie over a guy who's won you a lot of games. He's been a big reason for your success over the recent history. I mean, it's hard to move away from that, especially because kicker has so many question marks around it. So shout out to the coaching staff for getting it right on this one. But guys, before we head on out of here, who's your biggest breakout player from week one? For me, it's got to be Carl Granderson. I, I, it just simply is. I, I was very impressed with what he did. I want to see him continue to get better and better and better every week. Man, if he could finish with like, six, seven, eight sacks this year. What a season for the guy. So let me know in the comment section who's your biggest play, breakout player from week one. And guys, if you want to interact with me, if you agree with some of my thoughts, if you disagree with some of my thoughts, feel free to let me know. This is Land of the Free Home of the Brave. So get at me on Twitter, now X, whatever the hell it's called, at TraceGerard48. Shoot me a DM, tweet me. I love talking and, hit, and chopping it up with the Houdat Nation. So Feel free to hit me up. I'm trying to grow my social media presence. I've actually had a couple banger tweets go out recently. So if you guys want to check them out, TraceGerard48 on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, Saints fans, y'all stay golden. We'll catch you next time.